Good morning. We are getting closer and closer to our home stretch. We got a new section today. We're still talking about the four different types of conics. So our circles, our ellipses, our parabolas, and our hyperbolas. And so we've worked within how to do each one of them and what the equations look like, differences between them. And so today we're gonna to talk about, hey, what if we're given equations in a, what we call a general form? So we were seeing them where they were gonna be, um, like our hyperbolas, they had those fractions and they were set equal to one. Both of our hyperbolas and our ellipses were set equal to a value of one. Um, these ones are going to be where everything is just to one side of the equation. So when we talk about this general form, it is set up so everything is on one side of our equation and it's set equal to zero. So again, this is what we call general form and everything is going to be set equal to a value of zero. Okay, so if we have everything set equal to zero, how do we know what type of conic it is? Like, how do we want to switch it from this to whatever it is? How do we graph something like this? Well, so the big key here, and what this is gonna talk about in this unit is, how do we know, just from looking at the standard form, what type of conic it is? And the way that we do that is with this box of information. This box of information is our frame. So this is what we're gonna be using to determine our type of conic, is this right here. So it's gonna give us all type of information. So what we wanna do is we wanna notice everything has to do with A and C. What we wanna do is we wanna focus on the A value, which is the coefficient of our X squared, and the C value, which is the coefficient of our Y squared. So we're always looking at the coefficients of the two. And it says when B is equal to zero, the type of conic can be determined by comparing the signs of A and C. So this is for when B is equal to zero. That's this value right here is equal to zero. There is no X and Y in it. So when you go through these, um, you'll notice there's no X, Y equation. That's because that B value is equal to zero. So when you go down here, you can see that there's an X, Y there. So you've got to be careful that B value does not equal zero. So they're talking about it with the X and Y. So this B is zero, there's no X and Y, we can go straight to this box of information. So how do I do that? Well, let's look at our first example. So when I'm here, this value right here, the coefficient of my X squared, that's the A value. So I know A is equal to two. The coefficient here with the Y squared, so I'm always looking at the squared coefficients. They call that the C value and that's a value of five. Now, if the two are equal to each other, then I would have a circle. I would have a circle. If one of them was zero, if either A was zero, there was no X squared term or there was no Y squared term, then that A or C value would be zero, then I would have a parabola. In this case, I have A and C, I have values, so it's either going to be, when I multiply them, they're going to be greater than zero or less than zero. So in this case, when I multiply my A times C, it is going to be greater than zero because two times five is greater than zero. Oops, zero. 10 is greater than zero, right? Since it's greater than zero, it's greater than zero. This is going to be an ellipse. So I know that this information, this general form of the conic is an equation for an ellipse. So I know that without even having to put it in the standard form for an ellipse. So what about if my B value is not equal to zero? If my B value is not equal to zero. So this value right here, when I have an XY term, when we have an XY term, then we wanna use our discriminant. And our discriminant is b squared minus 4ac. And maybe you guys recall from hearing the discriminant. Where does that idea of discriminant come from? That comes from when we solve for the value of x. Hold on, sorry. My voice is terrible today. And it comes from this equation. So x is equal to b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus four a, C. sorry, I get a B, all over two A. I hope that looks familiar to you guys, right? You guys have seen this equation over and over. 
We use this to solve for our um, x values. When we have something, when we can't just factor it, we could go ahead and we can solve it using our equation here. And what's under the radical, what's under the radical, this is where our discriminant comes from. So it's the value that's under the radical. That's because this changes our solutions. When we solve for x and we have something that's under the radical that's a negative, then we would have an imaginary number. And we can't graph that on our normal coordinate plane. So this is where our idea of the discriminant comes from. And if it's equal to a zero, if it's equal to a negative, or if it's equal to a positive value, it changes the type of conic we're gonna have. But this is where it comes from, this b squared minus four ac. It's when we go ahead and we solve an equation, and we look at what's under the radical, that's the discriminant value that they're talking about here. And so if we just take these values here, my b squared minus four ac, and we have three scenarios, it's either gonna be less than zero, equal to zero or greater than zero, and that's gonna give us our type of conic. So when we have an xy term, we're gonna use this information here. So two different boxes of information. So again, this is when, at, or when B does not equal zero, and this is when B, these capitals, is equal to zero. So two different scenarios. These are gonna be the important information. You're gonna use everything in those boxes. So this one says, use a discriminant to classify the conics. So again, coefficient of my X is my A. This would be my B, C, and these would be my D, E and F, you don't need those, but just to show you guys what those values are representing. So in order to figure out the discriminant, my discriminant is B squared minus four AC. So that's gonna be, my B is six, so six squared minus four. In this case, there was nothing there, so it's just that imaginary value of one, so four times one times nine. So I'm gonna end up with, 36 minus four times one times nine is 36. So it's gonna equal a value of zero. So the discriminant is zero. If my discriminant is equal to zero, then what type of conic do I have? I would have a parabola. So two different ways to find out what type of conic we have, and it's all dependent on, is there that XY term or is there not that XY term? Go ahead and flip. So now this is where things are going to start to get tricky and it's going to build on some prior knowledge. So I will walk you guys through it because maybe you don't quite remember how to use completing the square. So this one says, Write the equation in the circle in standard form, then identify the center and the radius. So they're telling us that this is an equation of a circle. And I can easily verify this because here's my A, here's my C. So A is equal to one, C is equal to one. That means that A is equal to C. So if A is equal to C, there's no B value there. So I'm using this idea here. A is equal to C, we have a circle. So I already, can tell it's a circle. They also did tell me here that it's going to be a circle. And they want us to put that in standard form. Well, if you remember, standard form for a circle is going to be some x minus h squared plus some y minus k squared is equal to r squared. So they want this equation or this equation to look like this equation. Standard form. Huh. Well, this is really far off. So first step, group your x's together and group your y's together. Notice that there is no x by itself there. It's only a quantity squared. They have to be quantity squares. So my first step is to group my x's and y's together. What I mean by that is I'm gonna go ahead, I have x squared, my x squared, and I have a negative 10x. And then I have my y squared and an 8y, so it's plus, is that a plus there? I can't even see with all my stuff. Yes. So it's going to be plus my y squared plus 8y. And I want to put my real number. This number is going to be on the right side. So it's going to be equal to, I'm going to subtract 37. 
So minus 37. So this is going to be my step one. I group these together. I group my y's together. The reason is, is because I need to go ahead and I need to complete the square. So again, so we're going to group x's together and y's together. Okay, so that's my first step. Step two, complete the square. Okay, here's how I like to complete the square. This isn't the only way, it's not the best way, it's just my way. So if you know how to do it differently, do it your way. But here's how I like to do it. So when I complete the square, I'm grouping my x's. This is why I wanna do it. So normally I would kind of do this step with this step, but I just want to visualize what I'm doing for these. So I, I will skip probably this piece and go straight to this piece next time. But so plus some blank with my X's here, plus something. And then I have the same thing for my Y. So it's plus and I have a Y squared plus my 8Y plus some blank is equal to negative 37. But whatever is here, whatever I add to my right side, or sorry, my left side, I have to add to my right. So what I add to one side, I have to add to the other. And again, whatever I add here, I have to add here. So I set it up with my, out of my two blanks on my left and I make sure I add my two blanks to my right. In order to complete the square, this coefficient has to be a value of one. And in this case, both of them are. So this is a good first problem. Our next one will have a little bit more work. That's okay, it's not the end of the world. Okay, so since it's a value of one, I could go ahead and complete the square. And what I do when I complete the squares, I look at this number here, this middle number I always start with, and I take half of it. Now this is a negative 10. So half of negative 10 is negative five. And then I square it. And then I square it. And when I square it, I get 25. And that's the value that I put in this box on this line, I should say. So what I write here, I have to write over here. Very similarly, I go over here and I take that middle value and I take half of it. It's a positive eight. So half a positive eight is just going to be four. I square it. So I get 16, and that's the value that I put on my line here. So whatever I put here, I need to put here as well. Once I do this, then my third step is to write as a perfect square. So here's how I do that. So my first one, it's going to be an X. It's going to be something squared. Plus, it's going to be my Y, and it's going to be something squared is equal to all of this. Okay, so what do I mean by that? How do I complete the square? So whatever number is being squared here, whatever number is being squared is the number that I fill in here. So in this case, it's a negative 5. So that's what I'm going to use to write this as a perfect square. Whatever number's here is what I use. The positive is what I use to write inside here. So if I took x minus five and I quantity squared, x minus five times an x minus five, and I distributed this all out, so I'd get an x squared, I would get minus 10x, and I'd get plus 25. That's what this is. Oops, sorry guys, that's off to the side. So if I go ahead, this equation right here is just saying x minus five times x minus five, and if I distributed everything else out, I would end up with this equation. I'm rewriting it as a perfect square. Same thing here. I'm able to rewrite it as a perfect square. And now I have negative 37 and I have 25 plus 16. 25 plus 16 is going to equal 41. So negative 37 plus 41 is going to give me a value of 4. This right here is my equation for my circle. So if I want the center, my center then would be at five, negative four. My radius, my R squared is equal to four. So be careful, R squared is four. Then this means that my R is going to be a value of two. So my center here is five, negative four. My radius is two. 
I get that complaint in the square. If you haven't seen it for a while, it's a lot to take in. So we'll go ahead and we'll do another problem with it. And I always do it the same way. Always do it the same way. So I'm very consistent with that. There are some other ways, formula based. Um, you can use it that way if you're more comfortable with it and you like it that way. Whatever way works best for you guys. Okay. So my next one says, convert this to standard form. First off, what I wanna do is I wanna set it equal to zero. I wanna look at it as set equal to zero because when we talk about our standard form, like what kind of equation is, is this even? Like I have no idea. So I don't know what exactly it's gonna look like. And yet, I mean, I kind of do because the game is to answer choices, but so first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna set everything equal to zero. So I'm gonna move these both over to the left side. So when I do that, I get an x squared minus 6x plus 9y squared plus 72y plus 72 is equal to zero. This is standard form for a conic. So I can tell from looking at this, I have in my imaginary one. So I know a is equal to one, c is equal to nine. So A times C is going to be a value of nine and that's greater than zero. So I know I'm going to have an ellipse. I also know because of the format of these, it's a plus in between that's set equal to one. So I know what's going to be an ellipse. So two different ways to look at it. Yes, I have answer choices here so I can tell from there. But looking at my A and my C value, I can also determine it's going to be an ellipse. So they want me to take this equation here and make it look like this. So we're gonna do the same idea we did above where I group my axes together, I have my y's together, and I wanna take my real number and I'm gonna move it to the right side. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna be moving this to the right side and I'm gonna have x squared minus six x plus something, plus I have nine y squared, plus 72y plus something is equal to negative 72 plus something plus something. So I have to make sure I have my two blanks that are on the left have to be added to the right so that it's balanced. It has to be what I do to one side, I do to the other. I can't change the equation. So when I look here, I go, okay, great. This is a value of one. I can complete the square, but I have a problem here because this is not a value of one. I cannot complete the square of my y's the way it is. So what do I do? Well, I factor out that nine so that I end up with a value of one. So what does that look like? Well, it's gonna be, it's still gonna be x squared minus six x plus blank plus, and I'm gonna factor out a nine. So it's gonna be nine times my y squared plus, I have to factor it out from here. So this is going to be an eight y plus blank is equal to my negative 72 plus blank plus my blank. Now I need to be careful. This is saying nine times my y squared and it gives me nine y squared, right? This is nine times eight y would give me my 72 y. So when this nine's out in front, it's being distributed to every one of these pieces. So when I look at this value here, I'm not just adding this blank, I'm adding nine times whatever that blank is. So that's the big trick. I have to factor it out. And what I put here has to be that nine times whatever's here. It has to be even on both sides. So let's look at what the completing the square piece will look like. I look at my middle value here. It's a negative six. Half of negative six is negative three and then I square it. Negative three squared is nine, and that's what I use to fill in the blank. So what I put here, I'm gonna put here. This middle value is an eight. Half of eight is four. Four squared is 16. So this is gonna be 16. So this is really nine times 16. This is nine times my 16. And now I could just clean it up. So this is going to be x 
And whatever's being squared here goes in here with the squared. So it's a negative three. So it's X minus three squared. Plus this is going to be a Y and this is a positive four. So plus four squared is equal to, well, this piece right here is 144. So nine plus 144 is negative 72 plus 153. So negative 72 plus 153 is gonna give you a value of 81. So I'm almost there. And I know that this isn't a circle. Sometimes if we saw this, we would stop right there and we would leave it like this and think that this is our radius. But we had already figured out up here that it's not a circle, it's an ellipse. Ellipses have to be set equal to one. Circles are set equal to my R squared, but the equation for an ellipse is always set equal to one. So how do I make this one? Some of you guys just wanna subtract 80 and that's not correct because that would take it out of the standard form. The way that I do that is I just go ahead and I divide everything by 81. What I do to one piece, one term, I have to do to all of them. I have to do to each one. So when I do this, oh, ooh, ooh, don't do what I just did. Don't forget this nine has to stay with it. It doesn't disappear. That nine comes down. Make sure you have that coefficient there. That's part of it. It's nine times this quantity. Okay, so now I can clean this up. This simplifies to a value of one, right? And look, this nine simplifies this 81 into a value of nine. I can't simplify anything here. So my answer should look like this. It should be X minus three squared all over 81 plus, this is gonna be Y plus four squared all over nine is equal to one. And this is the equation in standard form of an ellipse. This is standard form of a conic. This is a general conic standard form. This is specifically for an ellipse. And it's gonna match up with this one right here. So good little intro. This is just for the instructions. You guys will have assignment on Monday. So I will obviously be going over more problems. Um, so hopefully you guys get used to seeing the pattern. Uh, once you catch on to the pattern, they're really easy, I feel like. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me. Um, otherwise, have an amazing weekend, and I will see you on Monday. Take care, dear. You're welcome.